The suggestion is that he would be happy to play in the biggest and most important games. That's nice, isn't it? But would rather sit out the less glamorous matches. Mbappe's played 71 minutes for Real Madrid against Villarreal. That was last Saturday, despite being left out of the French squad for this round of games due to, and I quote, injury. He was then seen in a Stockholm nightclub, as you do. <laughs> that was last Thursday when France were playing Israel and he's already posted himself back in training for Real Madrid despite his country playing Belgium tonight. <laughs> Very bizarre. Um, we'll get your view in just a moment, Jay, but first let's get the view from our European football expert, Kevin Hatchard, who joins us now. Kevin, hello. All right, Kev. <clears throat> How are we, chaps? We're well. We are good, but, well, I am, Jason. No, I'm, I'm OK, I'm getting through it, Kev. How are you? Are you all right? You well? Yeah, very good. Very good. I, I find this fascinating. I really do. I thought it was only a matter of time before this might be the norm. Tell us about these reports which came out over the weekend. Yeah, I mean, they've suggested that Mbappe is going to maybe pick and choose his matches going forward. I'm not totally convinced by this. I mean, there's no hard evidence that he's actually said this. Um, but, uh, you know, he is the captain. There is going to be a huge amount of scrutiny in terms of what he does and the decision to give him the captaincy I think has become more controversial because Antoine Griezmann has stepped away from international football and I think that caught a lot of people by surprise because I think certainly I felt he still had more to give but he was thought to be pretty upset that he didn't get the captaincy and he was increasingly feeling that you know, he couldn't give his best for France. So I think there's a lot of people looking at this and saying, well, actually, it would have been better if you give Griezmann the captaincy. Can, can so, I ask, has it been actually 100% confirmed that Mbappe is the captain of France? Yeah. Yeah, it he has. is the captain. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. We, we so, weren't sure about that in the meeting. No, no. He, he was given okay. the captaincy by Deschamps. That was the decision. And actually, when it happened, Mbappe knew that Griezmann was upset about it. And he actually was at pains to stress, look, I'll wear the armband, but we lead this team together. And at least that's what he said publicly. It's interesting. There's been a real effort, I think, to defend Mbappe in the last few days. Uh, Aurelien Chouameni, who led the team uh, against Israel, he came out and said, look, it doesn't matter. You know, that there's too much focus on Mbappe. There's too much talk about Mbappe. He's done nothing wrong. So I think there's been a bit of circling of the wagons here. Kev, I don't blame Mbappe one little bit. UEFA and FIFA have got themselves to blame. They've increased the amount of games in the Champions League. There's now this Club World Cup coming up next summer. Players, when they can pick and choose what games they feel they can play, they have absolutely every right. And, you know, the Nations League, they're just glorified friendlies. I don't blame him one little bit. And it wouldn't surprise me if he starts a bit of a trend here. Well, I think what is going to happen here in general, and Mbappe's always been a bit of a trailblazer in this regard, if you look at the way that he approaches um, sponsorship deals, for example. So there have been issues when the French Federation have done deals with betting firms or deals with companies that Mbappe doesn't want to be associated with. And he's just said, well, look, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be involved in that. So he has been a bit of a shop steward before, and I do think you are going to get a wider issue. We've said for a long, long time that nobody's giving ground and it's going to cause a real problem. So we're either going to have to have all the stakeholders. I hate that word, but it's one they use all the time. They're all either going to have to all get around the table and say, look, what do we actually want? Or we're going to completely have to change our attitude towards squad rotation mm -hmm. and towards players taking a rest when they need one. Um Kev, how did the rumours go down in France over the weekend? Well, I, th I think there is in general a bit of a split about Mbappe anyway, because I think there are those who believe that he is this diva that he's always painted as, and there are those who believe he's been a great servant to France and will continue to be so. He's always going to be that div divisive figure, I think. But as I say, this hasn't been confirmed at this stage in terms of it is a rumour at this stage. But I think you've hit upon absolutely the right thing, which is this is probably going to happen more and more with leading players who are going to come out and say, look, we've had enough of this. De Bruyne has said it. Um, you know, Jules Koundé has been quite uh, active in, in coming out and saying we're playing too many games. We've had Rodri. We've had Alisson. You're going to get more and more players say, look, enough's enough. We, we need to play fewer games yeah. because 
the game has changed. And and this argument we always get about, oh, they get loads of money, they get millions, doesn't change your body. No. Nope. Doesn't change how you react to the demand. Kev, I'm going to call you Trev. Kev. <laughs> Do you, what I, mean, I it, said to you about calling me other men's names, sorry. honestly, honestly. Um, does it weaken their brand if you start getting a lot of big heads not playing in these so-called international games that are home nations and not friendlies? Because all, all of a sudden, if you take out all the big hitters... Yeah, it's, it's exactly that, what it's going to do. Yeah, but so is there an argument to be had that it, if that does seem to, to be a trend amongst the big stars... The, the governing body, FIFA, UEFA, whoever, may say to these countries, listen, if you don't push the fact that these big players need to be playing, you won't be allowed to do X, Y, and Z in Come the future. Mate, how do you make that? I how do you do that? Well, I don't how do you think make Mbappe play? Yeah, I, do I don't do think they can. No, they can't. The, uh, the other strand of this to remember is that Real Madrid's have a lot of weight. And if yeah. Real Madrid's don't want you to play, you probably don't play. Like in the biggest games, yes, yeah. of course. But, you know, Real, we didn't expect him to be back for the game against Lille, and he was. We didn't expect him necessarily to play in the following La Liga game, and he did. Real Madrid won. We had the first of these battles that Real Madrid won before the season even started at the Olympics. And Mbappe was well up for playing in the Olympics. He talked about that a lot for France. And then that all, all suddenly disappeared. And I think a lot of that was Real Madrid saying, there's no way mm. you're going to play in the Euros and then the Olympics. Kev or Trev, Cheers, Kev. it's all, whoever you are, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on our show. We'll speak to you in a bit. I'll let Trev take the credit. <laughs> he gets the paycheck. Uh, there you go, the wonderful Kevin Ashton. Your view on this is, well, you sort of alluded to it, you think it's a good thing. I, I don't blame the players one little bit. Being but asked do, to play... Okay, but do you see it as a problem? For who? Let's say England... And let's say that Jude Bellingham, Cole Palmer, and who Harry Kane. Who cares about the who, No, seriously, no, no, who cares no, no, about Nations no, no, League? I, I don't, but I'm just talking about England as a national side, right? No. Hold on, hold on, hear me out. <laughs> they won't be able to fill out Wembley Stadium. Yeah, they, they, will. The, they will. I don't know, mate. Yeah, they will. Look, I, I feel personally as though the Home Nations games are good for the younger crowd, families. Right. Right? If okay. you've got a kid that goes, oh, I can't wait to see Jude Bellingham. Oh, he won't be playing. Oh, I love Trent. No, nope, he's not playing either. Well,. I'm not. I'm not. That, that's that's just a problem that's going to come with it, I guess. If that's how fans are going to feel, but ultimately the most important thing is that players feel they can give their best. The most. Look, you 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 heard Declan Rice interview there. He wants to get all these players right. They got these two games. They want to come back, and us as fans, all we want to see is our players come back fit and healthy, right? Arsenal fans, after what you know, Saka yeah. limping off, right? That's, that's, that, you know, that's all, not a disaster, but if he missed three weeks, they got Liverpool in a couple of weeks. No, the weekend. <clears throat> oh, no, you got them weekend, yeah. you're sorry. Right? If he, if he misses that game, all of a sudden you're going, is it worth it? How much was it really worth him playing against Greece on a Thursday night when actually the biggest game is against Liverpool in yeah. two weeks? You know, and that's how fans and managers and play, that's how we all think. Do you think the clubs have got every right, because they pay the players' wages, pay... The players range. Do they have every right to pull their players out of it? I don't know whether you can. I don't know whether you you can actually pull the player out. It's got to be down to the player. You can't tell a player what to do. You can advise him and ask him and maybe put pressure on him. You can't make him. You can't make Harry Kane. Bayern Munich can't make Harry Kane not not go away with England. Harry Kane wants to score goals. He wants to play for his yeah, club. Okay. You can't make players do it. But they can, can put pressure on you. Put pressure on and feel like Sir Alex used to with, with gigs. That's, that's yeah. famously right. Yeah. I think that UEFA and FIFA are going to find themselves in a situation where the best players or the players that play for the biggest clubs are going to go, you know what? Don't fancy it. I'm going to have two weeks off. I'm going to go to Stockholm and go to a nightclub. Do you, do you think that the fans will be sitting there listening to this thinking, one extra game, come on, it's not fatigue. It's not too it's many. It's not one extra it's, game, is it? It's, it's, no, but it's, I'm asking you, do you think the football no, fan will be going, like, you should play I, for your country? Think, like, what is Mbappe well, do doing? Do you know what? Ask them. Throw it out there okay. now. Because you'll find the, the the supporters of the big clubs, you know, that play Champions League, Europe, you know, these players, some of these players can be 70, 80 games this season because there's a Club World Cup coming up as well in the summer. City and Chelsea are in it. Yeah. Right? We've got that coming up. That's nuts. 80 you know? games is nuts. And then there's more games. Sorry, there's more games in the in the Europa League. There's more games in the Champions League. They've asked mm. for this. They're only, okay. what they're doing, they've found themselves in the situation they've created. 
Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.